Sydney Land, a sweet all-American girl who grew up in a suburban oasis worlds away from the famed Las Vegas Strip. She just had the, the best personality and she was very loving, a very, very loyal, very loyal friend. And a good girl who went to school and worked part-time at The Palm, a swanky steak restaurant in Caesars Palace. But Sydney also had dreams brighter than those Vegas lights. She really loved kids and wanted to do something in the medical field with children. All that suddenly changed when she hooked up with this guy, Nehemiah Kaufman, better known on the street as Neo. Sydney's mom, Connie, was never a fan. He didn't have a car. She was driving him everywhere, and I didn't like that. And, you know, I felt like he was taking advantage of, of her. But Sydney fell fast and hard for 20-year-old Neo, who cops say was actually living a shady life studded with petty crimes and brushes with the law. He had been involved in some illicit activities such as burglaries and the sale of narcotics and things like that. And that's not all. People close to Sydney say Neo was dabbling in the dangerous and sleazy world of sex trafficking, fashioning himself as a self-styled pimp. It's apparent that a lot of his female friends that he may have also courted were being utilized in various manners related to prostitution. Neo's bad boy influence is slowly drawing Sydney in, but it wasn't hard. There were other friends in her orbit luring Sydney as well, friends like a girl named Frankie. Frankie was this frumpy, basic, nerdy kind of a girl, and her and Sydney were friends all throughout high school. After graduation, the girls went their separate ways. But when they reconnected, Frankie had made a dramatic transformation. I saw Frankie once or twice, but she was really changing. She lost a ton of weight. Frankie had morphed from homely to haughty practically overnight. She was a very shy, insecure, a little bit chubbier girl. So for her to go from that to this is not normal. This woman knows Frankie, but does not want to show her face. We'll call her Kate. She says there was a reason for Frankie's dramatic transformation. She had become a prostitute. Now hanging out with Frankie and encouraged by her lover, Neo, Sydney quickly realized she could make more cash in one night of turning tricks than she could turning tables at the Palm. It was glamorized. It was a dream that was fed to her. Sydney fell into what is known as the lifestyle. Sydney was in love with him, but was Neo, in a sense, her, her pimp? You know what, that probably could be best described, but they did generally have care and love for one another. Do you know the truth? Did Sydney talk about it to you, about why she got into it? No, she never talked to me about it, but she sees what Frankie basically reaps in terms of materialistic and benefits and the cars and the lifestyle. Connie realized Sydney was changing, even slipping away, but why? The concerned mom had no clue about her daughter's dark secrets. I said, what's going on, Sydney? And she goes, I can't tell you, mom. And I said, tell me what's going on. And she goes, mom, I can't. It's just bad. It's just so, so bad. She was in over her head. She She's didn't. way over her head. And I don't know why I told her, I said, Sid, this is going to end tragically for you. And I don't know why. I used those words, because those are words I don't use. Was it a horrible premonition? 911 emergency? What's going on there? Days later, a frantic call comes into 911 from a neighbor who lived in Sydney's apartment complex. I walked into my friend's apartment, and there's just blood everywhere. And I, I just okay. seen a sheet on the ground, and I seen her body on the ground, and I... So there's two people? Okay. Yes. Two they people. were laying down in the... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's blood all over the wall. And in an eerie coincidence, around the same time, Connie gets a heartbreaking phone call from her son. A little after 12.30, Preston, my son, had called and he said, Mom, have you talked to Sid? And I go, no, what's wrong? And I could hear the anxiety in his voice. And I go, she's dead, isn't she? And he goes, oh, Mom, she's gone. Connie tears across town to Sydney's apartment complex, on the way, making her own desperate call to 911. I just got a phone call <clears throat> that my daughter's dead in her apartment. And I haven't heard from her in a couple days. Are you driving over there now? Yeah. But when Connie arrives at the apartment, cops won't let her in. I just remember 
running to try to get into the apartment. And they go, you can't go. That's my daughter's apartment. And they go, don't tell me it's her. They go, ma'am, you cannot go in. Tragically, Connie's worst nightmare was now a grim reality. Behind the walls of that apartment lay the blood-drenched bodies of Sydney and Neo, both shot in the head at close range. What stood out to you when walking through that crime scene? Many things stood out. Uh, lack of forced entry. Whoever was in the apartment with them appeared to be someone that they trusted. And there was something else about the circumstances surrounding their deaths, something that makes this murder an investigative nightmare. Was there DNA found? There were uh, several items that contained uh, DNA evidence. Uh, the problem is these people had a lot of friends, a lot of associates, a lot of people that hung out at the apartment complex with them. So sorting through all the, the details of what was relevant and what's not has been a challenge. A young couple found dead in Las Vegas, shot execution style in their home. But the killer's identity is still a mystery. It's something that we want to solve. It's, it's, it bothers us that it hasn't been solved at this point. Sydney Land's mom says her daughter became exposed to a sordid world of prostitution, drugs, and gangs. She wasn't brought up around criminals or crime. Connie Lamb believes Sydney's boyfriend, Neo, played a key role in luring her daughter to that dark side. Sydney was a perfect target because she was naive, she was trusting, she wasn't street smart. And now, Sydney was dead. When cops arrive at her apartment, it's a chaotic scene of blood and confusing evidence. I mean, you know, when I refer to DNA, I mean, there's cigarette butts everywhere and the ashtrays full of stuff. There's drink cups everywhere. So you talk about DNA being being in the apartment. There's, there's all kinds of stuff, you know. So uh, who knows what was supposed to be there and what wasn't supposed to be there. Detectives say the couple hung out with a shady cast of characters who regularly partied at Sydney's place. There had been a gathering the night before. Cops quickly seized surveillance video trained on doorways of the apartment complex. It was of no use. We went and reviewed hours and hours of footage uh, looking. Uh, unfortunately, there was nobody that we uh, identified through the surveillance footage as a person of interest. Adding to the challenge, who arrived first on the scene? There was at least one person that came in there and found the bodies, and then comes back and reports it to law enforcement. The cops say after he called, he then alerted friends on social media, an act that may have compromised their investigation. When we're arriving there, a majority of these friends and even family members have already come to the apartment. As detectives question the cast of characters, they're told the last known person to see the couple alive was Sydney's best friend, Frankie, the girl Sydney grew up with, who is now working as a Las Vegas prostitute. I know Frankie knows who did it. I know. You Donna, know. I know she knows who did it. But if Frankie knows who pulled the trigger, she isn't sane. Do you think she stays quiet because she's on the streets and it's her safety, it's her life? Yeah. Cops have not ruled out Frankie as a person of interest, but they say she has been straightforward with her information. And what detectives have gleaned from her and others pointing to a guy named Shane Valentine. Everything looked like Shane Valentine may have been our guy. And was revenge his motive? Cops say Valentine had a beef with Neo and had taken action before. Shane Valentine actually went over to Neo's mother's house, uh, fired around into the window, uh, broke out a couple of windows and rammed his car into the parking garage door as he threatened to cause harm to Neo and his family. The incident happened three weeks before the murders, then damning evidence from the bloody night of the shooting surfaces. They could ping his, his cell phone in the tower in that area about the time of the murder, and then he was in California the next morning. Cops kept an eye on Valentine, but couldn't directly link him through DNA to the shootings. Although it appears that he may not have been the shooter, the possibility remains that he was aware of what was going to happen or what was happened immediately thereafter. Valentine was convicted and is doing time in Nevada for shooting up Neo's mom's house. He's still a person of interest, but cops are basically at square one. And the rumor mill now churns with theories. I do believe that Frankie's pimp is the killer of Sydney Land. 
This woman we're calling Kate does not want to show her face, but knows Frankie and Sydney. She believes the guy named Damo, also known on the streets as Frankie's pimp, is the shooter. His motive? She says it all boils down to a Vegas-style pimp power play. I do think that because of Frankie and Sydney's relationship and how close they are, that there is a possibility that the fear of Frankie possibly leaving Damo for Neo would be motive enough for Damo to get rid of, essentially, someone that could take away from the white girl that brings him so much money. But cops don't buy that theory, and they aren't naming Damo a suspect. There were some claims that Dominic had a rivalry with Neo. We're not going to really talk about Dominic, but I can tell you there's no rivalry or anything that, uh, that, I, that I know of. They will reveal what they believe went down the night of the murders, hoping to shake out more information or tips. What do you think happened that night? Uh, I think um, Sydney and Neil were both uh, preparing to leave for the evening. Tracing the timeline, cops say on the last night of their lives, Neo and Sydney were planning to meet up with friends, but never made it out of the apartment. But I believe that based upon the interviews and stuff that were conducted, but the physical evidence, the way they were dressed, the packing of the bags, it was all consistent with that. Phone records indicate that they had contacted a local hotel and casino to book a room. Before heading out, there was a visitor, someone they willingly let into the apartment. Again, I go back to the, the lack of forced entry into the apartment. Uh, they were inside the apartment with Neil and Sydney as they prepared to leave, and out of nowhere, uh, they were shot. Connie believes it was a planned hit, and other people in their group knew about it. She says the game plan was for friends to party at a club called Dre's, then head to Hotel Link for an after party. Sydney had paid for the hotel, and she had sent a message to herself with the confirmation code about 11.45 on the 25th. But no one showed up at the hotel. No one called Sydney. No one texted no one. Connie believes no one showed because people knew the deadly plan was in motion and Sydney was already dead. They knew why not warn Sydney? Why not say run? Something's, someone's coming. Because I, I think that they were trying to get her out because they knew what was going to happen. I, I, and you know, when the police have said they don't believe that Sydney was ever the intended target, that it was Neo that was the intended target. But with no suspects, no weapon, and no answers, this Vegas whodunit is a mystery haunting cops. Do you have a motive at this point? No, ma'am. I wish I did. I think if we would have found a motive, maybe we could have found a little direction in the case. It still uh, keeps me awake at night. I know it keeps my partner, Detective Dasha, awake at night. Uh, it's something that we want to solve. And so does Connie, a grieving mother suffering from a broken heart and pain that never ends. Justice is going to come. And if it's not in this life, justice will be served. And that is a great peace of mind for us to know that the people that have done this to her will be punished. Right now, police say they are waiting for the person or people with the right information to do the right thing and come forward. If you have any information, you can call Crime Stoppers of Nevada anonymously at 1-702-385-5555.